Hi, it's Tara Bianca with Be Light Transformative Therapy. In this video, I want to give you three simple ways to increase your nitric oxide production. I'll give you a brief description of what nitric oxide is, a list of its key benefits, and then three simple ways you can reap those benefits. Nitric oxide is a small molecule that is produced within your body, principally within the inner lining of your blood vessels, but also in some of your nerve and immune cells. Nitric oxide can be thought of as a signaling molecule in that it helps to organize and activate your immune system in order to respond to and neutralize invading pathogens, viruses, and free radicals. But nitric oxide is also closely tied to your autonomic nervous system, and its release in your body can encourage parasympathetic dominance, along with all the wonderful benefits that come from down-regulating your stress response. You've already heard me mention a few, but let me give you a list so that it makes the benefits easier to remember. Nitric oxide keeps your blood vessels flexible. It encourages vasodilation, which means the expansion of your blood vessels, which in turn leads to lower blood pressure. It's also known to help improve mood and cognition. Some of that may be due to the increased blood flow to your brain, but it also has a tie to the signaling that happens between your neurons. And then finally, it helps support a healthy immune system and it helps to defend against pathogens. It does this by helping to activate your immune response in the face of pathogenic invaders. But it also does this by helping to encourage a parasympathetic response in the body, which in turn bolsters a healthy immune function. Too much nitric oxide can be harmful, but overwhelmingly, most of us do not produce nearly enough especially since this molecule is known to diminish significantly with age. I want to give you three simple ways to get that quick boost of nitric oxide. The first two are super easy, totally free, and fully accessible. The third way uses a tool that everyone might not have, but I still think it's super interesting and worth demonstrating for you. Number one is simply nasal breathing. The inner lining of your nasal cavity is greatly involved with the production of nitric oxide. So the more often you can breathe through your nose, the more consistent that production and release of nitric oxide into your system will be. I've made several videos of short guided breath sessions that encourage nasal breathing. If you're interested in experiencing those, you can click right up here to access them. Number two is humming. Humming forces you to breathe through your nose, which we already said increases your nitric oxide production. But something about the sustained oscillation of air inside your nasal cavity, vibrating through your facial bones and the sinuses of your skull, stimulates an exponential release of nitric oxide, in some cases up to 15 times more than just breathing through your nose normally. This humming is ancient wisdom now backed by modern science. If you're a yogi, you've most likely practiced Brahmari Pranayama, also known as the bumblebee breath. And if you don't know what that is, we're going to practice it together right now. I want to say quickly that I am not an expert in Vedic studies, so I want to share with you my version of this breath technique but if you're curious to learn more, please feel free to consult a yogic specialist to get the really fine details. Version one is to simply inhale through your nose and then on your exhale, hum. Your lips are closed, your exhale is slow, controlled, and extended, and you will feel vibration and pressure build up in the nasopharyngeal space. Let's try it now together. Go ahead and find a comfortable position. Make sure that your spine is aligned and that your chin is parallel to the floor. We're gonna do three bumblebee breaths in a row. You can use any pitch that feels comfortable to you. 
In fact, I invite you to play around with the pitch as you're exhaling, as you're humming, to see what feels best. Here we go, three hums in a row with an inhale in between each one. Version two, which I prefer, is to do the exact same thing that we just did, but while closing off some of your other sensory organs. What I mean is, we'll do another set of three bumblebee breaths, three hums, but this time we'll do it while also covering our eyes with our hands and blocking our ears with our thumbs. I find that this helps to focus the sound and the vibration even more. It's incredibly relaxing, and allows you to be more introspective with the experience and more aware of any changes you might feel in your body or in your mind. Traditionally, this breath technique uses a specific mudra or hand position to block off the sensory organs. But again, because I'm not an expert with that mudra, I'm going to show you my simplified hand position. I simply use my hands to cup my eyes like this, and then I use my thumbs to just gently press in on the tragus of my ears. That's that fleshy outer part of the ear. So I cup my eyes with my hands and then I gently push in on that fleshy nub of my ear. I invite you to join me now. Let's do another three bumblebee breaths while covering our eyes and our ears. I told you that the third way to increase nitric oxide might not be as accessible because it requires a special tool. So here it is. This is an Otto 128 Biosonics weighted tuning fork. What makes this so special? The fact that this tuning fork is weighted, here's the weights right here, means that this tuning fork is designed to give a much stronger vibration than a typical tuning fork. So you can hear it when I strike this. It doesn't give off a loud audible tone, but I can feel that it has a strong sustained vibratory quality. The auto tuner, O-T-T-O, is named so because it's designed to vibrate the bones of the body. It has an osteopathic intention. And then the 128 that's written on this tuning fork just tells you the frequency at which it's going to vibrate. If you're a musician, this tuning fork is gonna sound like a C on your instrument. The thing about Biosonic's tuning forks is that they were designed to have a long sustain 
and a lot of overtones. Whereas normally a tuning fork is designed to have a very pinpointed frequency and no overtones. A naturopathic doctor, musician, and sound energy specialist named Jean Beaulieu created these special tuning forks with the understanding that their overtone quality is what offers this phenomenally therapeutic result. Without getting too much into the details, the Auto 128 resonates at a perfect fifth. And Jean's research of almost 50 years now shows that the resonance of a perfect fifth offers the following therapeutic response. The perfect fifth vibrates your sphenoid bone in particular, which we sometimes refer to as the keystone of the cranium because it articulates with all of your other cranial bones. The sphenoid bone is also famous for being the throne upon which sits your pituitary gland or your master gland. The resonance of the perfect fifth through the sphenoid bone causes your pituitary gland to release endogenous opioids, which act as a natural pain reliever and also offer a sense of inner calm. And those endogenous opioids are also a precursor to nitric oxide release in your body. We finally got back to the nitric oxide, which we already said causes a relaxation response throughout your entire body, allowing it to properly defend itself, and also allowing it the space to recover and regenerate well. So how do you use this thing? I'm going to show you seven different points on your body where you can use the Auto 128 most effectively and where it will feel really good. I'll do a demo for you, and then before the end of this video, I just want to be sure to mention a few safety precautions and also tell you how you can purchase your own Biosonics Auto 128 tuner if that's interesting to you. Point number one is the crown of your head. If you're familiar with the anatomy, I'm going to be at the intersection point between the coronal suture, which runs this way, and the sagittal suture, which runs this way. In addition to releasing nitric oxide, this point will also be very stimulating to the pineal or pineal gland, however you like to say it. Point number two is the center of the forehead or the third eye space. This will again help to contact and have an effect on that pituitary gland. But this supposedly also enhances your sphenoid occipital movement, which will have an effect on your craniosacral rhythm and your autonomic nervous system, and also the flow of your cerebral spinal fluid. Point number three is actually two points, one on your right and one on your left. This point is going to be your mastoid process, which is that bony prominence right behind your ear. So in addition, again, to that nitric oxide release, this is also going to be really helpful for TMJ issues or tension in the jaw. Point number four is going to be on the actual TMJ, so right on that temporomandibular joint. If you just come a little bit in front of your ears and a little bit below your cheekbone and you open and close your mouth, you'll feel that ball of the joint pop out under your fingers. So we're going to use the tuning fork right on that spot, point four. Point number five is the manubrium, or this upper portion of your sternum that you find right under the midpoint of your two clavicles. The sternal points feel amazing with the tuning fork. You really feel the resonance. And these points in particular offer a really nice spike in nitric oxide release in your body. Just a little caution here that if you have a pacemaker, 
please avoid using the tuning forks on your body, particularly in the chest area. Point six will be a point right in the center of your sternum, right on the body of the sternum. This again is going to give you that really nice spike of nitric oxide. And here again, please be cautious if you have a pacemaker, no tuning fork on the body. And then point number seven, the final point, is going to be right in the center of the sacrum. This is that triangular bone at the base of your spine. And here again, we're also looking to improve craniosacral rhythm, encourage a balance in the autonomic nervous system, and also encourage parasympathetic dominance in the body. We're trying to create a stronger relaxation response. Please do not use tuning forks on the body with anyone who has osteoporosis, who's prone to fractures, or who currently has a fracture. If you have a stress fracture in your body and you don't know about it, the tuning fork is very quickly going to reveal that fracture to you. The vibration is going to be very painful. As I already said a couple times, please do not use tuning forks on the body if there is a pacemaker present. And then most importantly, and most relevant to this video, in order to get the benefit of nitric oxide release, please only use the tuning fork once or a maximum of two times in the same localized spot. In this case, less is very much more. If you continue to use the tuning fork in the same spot again and again and again and again in the same session, you will actually cause a decrease in nitric oxide as opposed to an increase. If you're interested in learning more about these amazing tuning forks, please visit biosonics.com. John is a really great practitioner and he has a lot of excellent information to offer. I hope you'll try out these three tips for producing your nitric oxide production. If you try any of them out, please reach out to me and let me know how it goes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.